Hi everybody, it's Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni, and um, this is part three, um, and just kind of sharing about what I'm going through, um, partly to, partly from my own healing. That's probably 75% of it, to be honest, is this is how, this is one of the things that helps me to heal, and I realized today that this is something that would be very healing for me, is to be able to share this, um, but I also really hope, and this is also part of what heals me, I hope that um, sharing my pain and my experience will help other people. Um, basically two groups, one, people who are going through something similar who need to hear from somebody else that what they're going through is not crazy. And, um, and sometimes it just helps to know that somebody else has gone through something similar. Um, the other group of people is those of you who want to know what, what it's like to go through this. How can I help somebody? How can I, how can I encourage them and comfort them and minister to them? And, um, so I'm sharing with you also. Um, and, and also, I guess partly this is to share with my friends because you all have been so super amazing. And, um, in some ways this is kind of to, um, honor you. Um, I wish I could name everybody my name, but I can't. Uh, like I said, there were like over 550 comments on one of my posts, my first post, of people saying that they were going to pray and stuff. I can't even read all those. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, you guys. I mean, that is when you see the sheer numbers like that, you just feel like there is this huge hug coming to you. That you know, it's like I skip around through it just trying to read a few of them. Um, it's just wow and friends who have uh, shared what's going on in my life with other people and those people have friended me specifically to tell me that they're praying for me and to give me encouragement that you know when strangers offer you love that is like so wow <laughs> um yeah it is oh gosh what you know human beings are amazing 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 their capacity to love you know we saw that with 9-11 and stuff like that and I'm getting a taste of that in the last couple of days like I have never ever I've never had even a tiny taste of the kind of love that I've had poured out on me in the last couple of days it has just been stupefying <laughs> um anyway uh I am a Christ follower Jesus is everything to me so if you're not, please don't be offended because I'm going to share from the Bible. I'm going to share some stuff that has really encouraged me. Um, and you don't need to watch this if you don't want to, that I do invite you to because it might be proved to be encouraging to you too. Um, I am certainly not trying to push my religion on you. I am sorry for those of you who have felt um, that Christianity has been pushed on you at times. That is not that is not the way that um, that we're supposed to share with other people. Um, so anyway, so this is one of the passages that was sent to me um, that I wanted to share with you all because it w it's been very, very comforting to me and I just wanted to kind of share why and stuff. Um, and, and this is personal. It may not be, you know, like if you shared this passage with somebody else, it may not have the same effect. I don't know. Um, oh, that was one other thing that I wanted to say. You know, one of the things that I've appreciated is seeing people share from their hearts if you don't know what to say, well, first of all, realize there is really no right or good thing to say. Nothing is going to help. <laughs> Nothing is going to take away the pain. It's more the fact that you've tried to say something. It's more the fact that you have wanted to comfort and encourage and probably one, two, three, four people's encouragement is not going to make much of an impact. Um, but so many people's added together makes a huge impact. Um, for me, that's been the case. Um, probably, you know, if only 10 people had shared their love with me, it would have been different. And maybe that would have been exactly what I needed. I don't know, but God knew what I needed. And so that's what he gave me. But, um, but what I'm saying is, what am I saying? I am saying when you give your love to somebody and want to comfort them, do something that is you, something that is you, not, don't think about what's the right thing to say. There's not a right thing to say. 
Nothing's going to help. And, and there's not one right thing to say because everybody's different. The person that you're talking to is different. And who you are is different. So share from your heart. You know, think about what, what are the gifts that God has given me and use those. I mean, like right now, what I'm doing is I'm using my gift to share with those of you who might be hurting who watch this in the future because you're, you've looked on YouTube for something that will help you to see what somebody else went through and to know that you're not crazy <laughs> because you're crying all day and screaming and, <laughs> and you feel like your heart has been ripped out. Um, you know, so, so that's my, that's, that's what I'm giving. And that's different from what most people are going to give. And, um, you know, you, this one person has a song and they share it and that's, that's them and their heart and they're sharing it with you. And, um, that you guys, that's what I want to encourage you to do is just look into your own hearts, look at your own gifts and share from that. And then also, you know, maybe look at, you know, not maybe, but you should look at what you know about that other person. Um, I, it's, this is not at all to put anybody down, but it was just really odd to me to realize that people weren't sharing scripture with me. Um, because you all know that I love scripture, but I think that we have been so trained to think that if we share a verse, a Bible verse, how dare you share a Bible verse with somebody? Because that's just so trite. And it's such a cliche thing. It's not okay. It's not. And, um, and I appreciated it so much. The, the second that I said, and I may have even done it late at night. I can't remember the second that I said, please share with me your, your verses because I can't think and I need, I don't even know where to go in the Bible because I just, I just could not think immediately. I think like 10 verses in the first minute, you know, it was just incredible because it was like you were all chomping at the bit to share those verses. But I, I, I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it just seemed like maybe you, you were afraid to, maybe you were afraid that I was going to think that was so cliche and that you weren't taking my pain seriously or something. Um, so I just, I want to tell you, no, (laughs) I love it. I, I felt like in a way I felt like, um, all you needed was to be told, yes, please share your scriptures with me because you were just waiting because you had these scriptures that had meant so much to you and you wanted to give them. And the moment I said, please give me scriptures, bam, it's like the floodgates open. It was so amazing and so wonderful. And then I got up in the middle of the night and I wanted to post, please share your songs with me because that's the other thing is music just really, really ministers to me. And I got onto Facebook and several people had already shared their songs. And I was like, oh God, thank you so much. It was just like, and I listened to those ones and then I posted asking for more. And um, that was when I started seeing that when people are allowed to share their gifts and share from their hearts, it is so incredibly beautiful. So Anyway, one of the passages that was shared with me that I loved, and and this is also a special passage to me because um, my books, the Isaiah Cadre series, uh, which is a series of novels that starts out with these girls in college and it's going to go all the way through the rest of their lives. Um, the first book I had called Beauty for Ashes, and that's from this passage. <clears throat> I ended up changing the name because there were something like 60 books called Beauty for Ashes and I felt like I needed um, to have a different name I just I don't like being the same as everybody else Um, so anyway so so already you know this passage was special to me and that's probably why it's the first one that I'm picking because um, it was just a really special passage to me so anyway it says it's Isaiah 61 and it says and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. And remember that one time when Jesus was in the synagogue and he was handed the scriptures to read, this is what he read. And he meant it. He wasn't just reading it like I'm reading it. I'm just reading you the words from the Bible. He was reading it because this was him. The spirit of the Lord God was upon Jesus. So when you're hearing this, think Jesus. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. Guys, I feel very afflicted right now. Um, maybe not quite as much today as I did yesterday and Sunday. Um, I think part of you know what I went through 
the first day or two was feeling like I was being punished um, and maybe even Bill was being punished um, I remember when we were dating I had said it's actually not a good idea for you to love me because I'm never allowed to have anything good for very long and if you love me you'll die um, and I just felt like that's what happened he he was taken from me because I don't deserve to have anything good and he was punished by being killed because he loved me and it's like illegal to love me which has been another really incredible thing about having all this love poured out on me is because I feel like it's not okay for people to love me and the love has been so overwhelming that I can't there's no way to refuse that there's no way for me to not accept that and um, you guys have no idea you have no freaking stinking idea what it has done to me to have all of you love me so much it has just been like wow um, and I, don't, I don't feel like you're saying oh you're a great wonderful perfect person you're, you've just loved me regardless and um, that's just been really cool <laughs> it, it's changed my life it really has okay so the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted I'm not exactly sure what the good news is that I'm going to get in this situation I mean in this case we're talking about the gospel being brought to the afflicted but I do think that this also applies in other situations and um, I guess I don't know maybe the good news is that God loves me that he is pouring his love out on me um, and he's definitely pouring his love out on Bill you know Bill's up in heaven and hopefully having a great time um, no I'm sure he is having a, having a great time um, uh, so to bring good news to the afflicted uh, I think also part of that is uh, for me and maybe this isn't how the scripture should be applied but it gives me an opportunity to kind of share um, part of what's been healing too is that um, the day after Bill was killed um, I just felt like God said to me because I, I said to him Lord I'm just going to be half a person for the rest of my life and he said no you have to be a whole person you now have to be a whole person and at first I was just like I can't do that I can't do that I have been ripped in half and he said, I'm going to be that other half for you. And you can do it. And you will be whole. And, um, and it was more like an order, <laughs> but a very loving order. Um, it was like, you're not allowed to just be half a person. And, um, and he started giving me ideas. I mean, it was just like whoosh, this brainstorm kind of thing of different ideas of things that could be done to honor Bill, um, to... I, I'm not exactly sure how to how to explain it um, to use my gifts in a way that would honor God and also honor my husband um, because he loved <laughs> you know, it's like I remember he said to me one day you have a ministry here <laughs> it was like, he was just like so excited and um, you know and I think he's up in heaven being excited about some of the ideas that I have that I'm really really not ready to share yet so I'm not going to um, but anyway, um, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and I've never understood that word the way that I understand it now. Um, my heart is broken. I mean, I just, I think that if you did an EKG that you would seriously see something that's been torn apart. That's what I feel like. And he's going to heal that broken heartedness I I can't even imagine how he can do that but I have that promise and that is what I'm holding on to to proclaim liberty to captives and you know right now I do really really feel like a captive I feel like um, I don't feel like I really have control of myself very well right now I um, 
I don't have control of my mind. I mean, it's like I look out the window. Oh, I don't quite even look out the window. I just see out of the corner of my eye Bill walking across the street. Um, or I am thinking one moment about the fact that he's gone and I'm crying. And then I get up and I walk into the kitchen to ask him a question. And, um, or I wake up in the middle of the night and I just, he's not in the bed, so I think he's in the bathroom or something. And, um, you know, or I'll be doing fine. And then all of a sudden I'm bawling and screaming a blood curdling scream that if people heard it, you know, they'd probably call the police or something. Um, yeah, I just, I feel captive because I don't have control of myself right now. Um, and hearing from him that I'm going to have liberty from that is very encouraging. Freedom to prisoners, kind of the same thing for me right now. Um, there may be like a different meaning to that, but to me that kind of is the same thing. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. You know, when I first read that, um, after this happened and this was sent to me, I thought, well, this is definitely not the favorable year of the Lord. That doesn't apply to me. That is, you know, a whole different thing. But I felt like God was saying, no, this year, even though you've had the worst thing that has ever, ever happened to you in your entire life, you've had that happen. I'm going to show you my favor in ways that you can't imagine. And I've already seen that in the last couple of days, just with the outpouring of love and prayers and encouragement and yeah, I mean, it's just been, <laughs> wow, wow, I feel like I have God's favor. That doesn't mean that I'm enjoying my life right now, because regardless of how beautiful all that has been, this is seriously the most horrific, horrible, horrible, horrible time that I've ever, ever experienced. Um, but even in that, he gives favor. Um, the day of vengeance of our God, I'm really not sure how to apply that to myself. To comfort all who mourn, I don't even need to say anything about that. To grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, or a different version says giving them beauty instead of ashes. You know, it's like he's saying, I'm going to take what you're going through, and I'm going to make something beautiful out of that. In, um, in my book, Beauty for Ashes, which is now called Now It Will Spring Forth, um, the way that that's illustrated is that the main character is raped and she becomes pregnant from the rape and seeing how God takes those horrible ashes from this awful thing that's happened and he gives her this tremendous amount of grace and blessing um, and that's beauty for ashes <laughs> you know God taking something that's ashes you can't make anything out of ashes and he takes that and he makes it into beauty. Not just something beautiful, but makes it beauty itself. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what God's going to do with that. Um, the oil of joy, I mean the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Um, that is one thing that I am praying as I... I um, for about a year or so, I've been putting frankincense on myself to... Um, because I have because I have Lyme and I'm just in a lot of pain and frankincense helps that quite a bit um, and so I've been putting that on and when I first started using it it reminded me of anointing oil because um, a lot of anointing oils are made with frankincense in them frankincense and myrrh is a very popular anointing oil and there's nothing you know super magic or holy about it it's just you know those are biblical things and so that's what we use and um so the smell of the frankincense made me think of prayer. And so for a long time, I would pray for myself and pray for my body as I put that on. And somehow I got out of that habit. And when I read this, it reminded me of that, that I need to be anointing myself with that oil and accepting that as the oil of gladness, that God is going to give me joy even in pain. Um, and I'm starting to kind of see that, how that's possible. Um, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. Uh, w one thing that I am learning in this time to do, and this is part of the reason why I asked for, well, actually it's the reason why I asked for songs, is because I realized that when I 
feel like I can't take it anymore. That music is probably, and music that worships God is what I need. And, and this may not be true for everybody. This is, this is me. Um, music ministers to me. It lifts my spirit. Um, I, I live in a house that's, you know, I don't have people around me. I don't have other houses like right next to me or anything. And so I'm pretty sure that people don't hear me. Nobody has come knocking at my door. The police have not shown up. People have not shown up with pitchforks and, and, um, and torches. Uh, so I don't think anybody can hear me. I sing at the top of my lungs um, when I'm worshiping, which is probably part of why my voice is getting so hoarse, that and the crying. Um, I have just found that that I cry and cry and I weep while I'm singing, but it is an offering to God. And it's not like, it's not the kind of offering like I'm giving you my best. It's the offering of, Lord, here is who I am right now. I am this mess, and I'm giving it to you. <laughs> and, you know, like a little kid giving a weed to their parents. And, um, and I'm trusting you to do something with this. I'm trusting you to make something beautiful out of it. And, and it's not just I'm saying that. I really believe that. And I think that's because God has, because God has used scripture in my life so much. And part of that, and I'm not saying this to make myself sound good or anything, but to say, I want to encourage you to do this because this has helped me through this. And I think each of us will probably go through some kind of grief like this at some point in our lives. And so maybe it might be a good idea to start being prepared. I think the fact that I have spent so much time in scripture and I have valued scripture so much is part of why this is able to minister to me so much. Um, so I just... Like I said, I'm not saying that to say I'm good or anything, but just to say, okay, here's one thing I did right. <laughs> here's one thing that I would really like to encourage you to do because it has made a huge difference for me. Okay, so the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of the spirit of fainting. Ooh, I just, the mantle of praise. See, I'm a very physical person, and so doing things that are symbolic really helps me. So maybe I will find... It's hot, so I don't want to put on a cloak or something, but maybe one of my lightweight scarves or something, a big scarf to put over myself um, when I'm praising might also be really comforting. Um, so they will be called oaks of righteousness, and oaks are really strong, big giants. Um, gosh, I mean, don't we all want to be spiritual giants? Um, that's what God's working on making us into through all this kind of stuff. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. And you guys, this is the bottom line. It's not to our glory. It's to God's glory. All of this stuff that he's doing, giving us freedom to prisoners, um, giving favor in a terrible time, uh, comforting us, giving us beauty instead of ashes, giving us the oil of gladness, giving us the mantle of praise, making us into oaks of righteousness. That's none of that is us. None of that is us. I am not giving myself a mantle of praise. I am not comforting myself. I am not giving myself the oil of gladness. I may be, you know, putting oil on. That's more symbolically to help me understand it and feel it and believe it. Um, because that's how I'm ministered to is by doing things physically. Um, one of the ways that I'm ministered to. But I'm not giving myself that spiritual oil of gladness that's all coming from God all of it every single bit of it so I don't get any of the glory not even for being an oak of righteousness he'll he'll make me eventually into an oak of righteousness and he's going to make you into an oak of righteousness if you let him too but that's not you making yourself into that that's him making you into it and the reason for that is so that he can be glorified and that's the thing you guys that gives me hope in this is that God's going to be glorified through what happened somehow. I don't know how. I'm, I, I, there's part of me that wants to say I can't imagine, but he has started giving me some ideas. Um, so I do see that God's going to be glorified through this. And that guarantees all of this. Because in order for him to be glorified, all of this has to happen. Tell me that's not comforting. <laughs> That is incredibly comforting. And there's more in this chapter too. But I um, 
it's after 9 and I'm teaching tomorrow at 6.30 and I'm hoping to talk to my parents before I go to bed so I'm going to turn this off. You guys, I feel better just getting to talk about this. It helps a lot. So thank you so much for not thinking that I'm stupid. Maybe you do think I'm stupid for doing this, but for not saying that. I appreciate that so much, and I love you. I love you guys all so much. I know I always say I love you at the end of my videos, but and I've always meant it, but it comes from so deep in my heart now that I love you guys so much and because I've seen that love poured out on me. Okay, I love you all, and I will see you later.